From the age of sail through the Second World War, naval combat was done primarily in close quarters and with cannons. Naturally, the technology improved quite a bit in those intervening centuries, but the idea was more or less the same. The ship with the most guns and most armor was usually the one that emerged victorious. Over the years, warships became larger and heavier, a trend that culminated in the 1940s with the massive Bismarck, Iowa, and Yamato-class battleships. But by the close of World War II, the nature of naval combat had begun to change. Airplanes and submarines vastly improved over their World War I counterparts, presenting threats from above and below. A few years later, the advent of practical long-range guided missiles meant the adversaries no longer had to be within visual range to launch their attack. Going into the Cold War, it became clear that to remain relevant, warships of the future needed to be smaller, faster, and smarter. Nowadays, besides great armament and armor, warships are also full of radars that protect them from various threats. For our viewers, we prepared a list of the most futuristic of them. Well, let's take a look at them. Zumwalt Class Traditionally, warships are tailored to perform specific missions, but the cutting-edge Zumwalt has been a ship in search of a mission, especially since its procurement of hyper-expensive ammunition for its primary weapon system was cancelled. In the post-Cold War 1990s, the U.S. Navy lacked peer competitors on the high seas, so it conceived its next-generation service combatants for engaging coastal targets. The Navy promised Congress a larger destroyer requiring only 95 crew instead of 300 thanks to automation, with adequate space and power generation capacity to deploy railguns and laser weapons. The new warships would be stealthier to avoid enemy attacks and pack rapid-firing 6-inch guns with a range of 150 miles for the sustained bombardment of land targets. 32 Zumwalts were to succeed the Arleigh Burke class destroyer. In addition to rapid-firing 6-inch guns, the Zumwalt had an 80 Mark 57 missile vertical launch cells dispersed across her bow and stern to minimize secondary explosions. Those could target and launch Tomahawk land attack cruise missiles, ASROC anti-submarine rockets, or quad packs of evolved Sea Sparrow medium-range air defense missiles. The Zumwalt spacious landing pad and hangar could accommodate up to three MQ-8B helicopter drones or two MHR-60 helicopters, which can carry Hellfire anti-tank missiles or torpedoes. Nowadays, the destroyer's crew of 150, plus a 28-person air detachment, exceeded by over 50% the original promised number, but remained half of that of an Arleigh Burke destroyer. Furthermore, its rocket-boosted LRLAP GPS-guided shells cost $800,000 each, nearly as expensive as more precise, longer-range and harder-hitting cruise missiles. The Navy finally canceled the insanely expensive munitions, leaving Zumwalt with two huge guns it can't fire. Even the destroyer's stealthy hull did not offer a clear advantage if it had to escort or require an escort from unstealthy warships, and keeping a class of just three vessels operational meant very high overhead expenses in training and sustainment per individual ship. The Zumwalt needed a new mission, even if that meant tweaking its capabilities at an additional cost. Finally, in December of 2017, the Navy announced the class would specialize in surface strike, i.e. hunting down other ships. The surface warfare role may best leverage the Zumwalt's stealth capabilities, allowing it to range ahead of the fleet and penetrate anti-access zones threatened by long-range anti-ship missiles. The destroyers will be modified to fire new Maritime Tomahawk Block 4 subsonic anti-ship missiles and SM-6 active radar homing missiles. The cost of the current upgrades is reportedly $90 million, a sum which may prove worthwhile if it helps recoup some of the value after the $22 billion sunk into the ambitious but failed ship concept. Independence Class the Independence Class LCS is planned as a fast, agile, mission-focused platform designed for operation in near-shore environments, yet capable of open-ocean operations. It was designed to defeat asymmetric anti-access threats such as mines, quiet diesel submarines, and fast surface craft. The 127-meter high-speed Timurin hull warship integrates new technology and capability to support current and future mission capability 
from deep water to the littorals. However, as we know, these Navy warships have a number of serious problems. For instance, in 2010, the Navy had discovered aggressive corrosion around the Independence's engines. The problem is so bad that the barely-year-old Independence LCS at that moment had to be laid up in a San Diego dry dock so workers can replace whole chunks of her hull. In contrast to the first LCS, the still-hold USS Freedom, Independence is made mostly of aluminum, and that's one root of the ship's ailment. Corrosion is a $23 billion a year problem in the equivalent heavy U.S. military. The 418-foot-long warship is dissolving due to one whopper of a design flaw. Austell USA, Independence's Alabama-based builder, calls it galvanic corrosion. It's what occurs when two dissimilar metals, after being in electrical contact with one another, corrode at different rates, Austell explained in a statement. Due to this problem, in 2021, U.S. is scheduled for decommissioning two ships of this class, USS Independence and USS Coronado, which have been serving in the U.S. Navy for 11 and 6 years, respectively. Spearhead Class Spearhead Class is a 338-foot-long aluminum catamaran designed to be fast, flexible, and maneuverable. Even in austere ports, making it ideal for rapidly transporting troops and equipment within a theater of operations. It has the capability to carry up to 300 troops and 600 tons of cargo at high speeds in support of intra-theater sea lift and logistics. In addition to reaching maximum speeds of 25 to 45 knots, Spearhead class is equipped with an expensive flight deck, a load ramp capable of supporting 100 tons of weight, and a 20,000-square-foot mission bay. EPFs have sleeping accommodations for up to 42 crew members, 104 mission personnel, and airline-style seating for 312 people. Its aviation flight deck can support day and night flight operations for a wide variety of aircraft, including CH-53 Super Stallions. It is crewed by 25 civil service mariners working for MCS who operate, navigate, and maintain the ship. For this mission, the crew will be accompanied by both active duty sailors and Marines. MSC provides essential assured logistics and service support to the joint warfighter, enabling distributed lethality and maritime dominance as the nation's premier maritime transportation organization. Type 45 Destroyer Britain's Type 45 destroyers are among the most advanced warships ever built. They're suited to a huge rank of tasks, from hunting down pirates to defending the fleet from air attack or providing humanitarian aid. Equipped with the ferocious Sea Viper missile, which can knock moving targets out of the sky from up to 70 miles away, the Type 45 destroyers are the backbone of the Royal Navy. The Type 45 destroyer also comes equipped with an array of conventional weaponry including the BAE System's 4.5-inch Mark 8 Mod 1, two 30 million DSM Mark IIs, two Phalonix 20mm close-in weapon systems, two 7.62mm miniguns, and up to six FN MAG general purpose machine guns. This fearsome arsenal is designed for a range of purposes, from repelling fast inshore attack craft to destroying short-range missiles in mid-air. To protect the Type 45 destroyer from incoming missiles, the onboard CNAT decoy systems uses radar jamming and deception, while the surface ship torpedo defense system, or SSTD, safeguards against waterborne threats. The Type 45 destroyer is also equipped with a bow-mounted medium-frequency Ultra EDO MFS 7000 sonar to detect enemy submarines. However, this destroyer also has a serious problem. The Type 45 class has been plagued with propulsion failures stemming from the design of the intercooler for their main turbine generators, among other causes. The UK press has reported several instances of the problem. The HMS Daring lost power in the Atlantic in 2009, and again off Kuwait in 2012. The HMS Dauntless lost power off Senegal in 2012, and again during an exercise off England's southern coast in 2014. All six of the vessels will eventually be retrofitted with other engines to provide backup power. The Navy has hoped that the $1 billion destroyers would be able to go for more than two decades without a major refit, a key cost-saving component of the procurement plan. Instead, each will be cut open and upgraded at the next dry docking. Visby Class The Swedish Navy's Visby Class warship has a distinctive look. Its sharp lines, minimalist substructure, and absence of almost everything you normally associate with what a ship looks like 
makes her arguably the most futuristic warship afloat, and it is all because of one thing, stealth. Other warships also incorporate stealthy features, but none take it as far as the Visby class. So it may be surprising that the Visby class is already 20 years old. The first of six ships was laid down in 1995 and launched on June 8, 2000. It was cutting edge then, and thanks to significant upgrades, it's still cutting edge today. One of its most distinctive features is the fully enclosed automatic cannon at the front. It is the same Swedish design 57mm weapon that is used on the US Navy's littoral combat ships (LCSs). To fire, a hatch opens and the gun barrel pops up. Other weapons include anti-submarine torpedoes, the latest Torp 47 is currently being deployed, and long-range RBS-15 dual-purpose anti-ship land-attack cruise missiles. Both of these systems are invisible from the outside. They are hidden behind doors in the side to help reduce the radar signature, and they are joined by the double-edge Mark III remotely operated vehicle, a type of robot which can be used to search for mines. Visby's stealthy lines are part of what the builder Saab calls genuine holistic stealth, or ghost. It aims to minimize the ship's transmitted and reflected energies, meaning heat, light, sound, electric potential, and electromagnetic radiation. In other words, to make it as close to invisible as possible. Stealth aircraft do the same thing, but they're much smaller, and other ships do not take it as far. Today, the Visby class remains visually and technologically cutting edge, and despite shipbuilding generally headed in a similar direction, she seems to stand out from the crowd for many years to come. Well, that's all for today. We hope you enjoyed the video. Let us know in the comments which ship impressed you the most. And don't forget to give us a like and smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new interesting videos. See you next time.